All right. Hi, everyone. My name is Duncan, and I am a consultant librarian with Peace Library System. And today's session is a deep dive on podcasting. Now, some of you may be familiar with podcasts and others may not, but that is okay. I myself do have some experience with podcasts. I created and hosted one, um, and I've also been to radio school. So I do have some experience in audio software, which directly relates to a lot of what we're going to be talking about today. Now, podcasts are freely available on a number of apps, such as Spotify and Apple Music. You may have even helped patrons find and download podcasts, but today's session is not so much about how to create a podcasting program for the library as it is an overview of what podcasting is. So this is meant to be more informational as opposed to a mood board for programming ideas. However, if you do have programming questions, you can contact me and I can definitely help brainstorm with you. Um, before we get into it, we did recently launch some new technology kits, um, one of which is an audio technology kit, and I'm going to be using some of that equipment from the kit in the session today. Um, and so the goal for the session is that by the end of this, you're going to feel comfortable with the equipment and the software that I show you, and you'll be comfortable enough to help patrons get set up and record their own podcast, or maybe they want to record their own music or other audio-based projects. Or maybe you want to record your own library uh, podcast. Who knows? So we're going to do a land acknowledgement. Peace Library System acknowledges that we are located on the Treaty 8 territory of the Cree, Beaver, and Diné people and Region 6 of the Métis Nation of Alberta. We are grateful to live, work, and learn together on this land, which has been home to many First Nations, Inuit, and Métis peoples since time immemorial. We recognize this land as an act of reconciliation, and we also commit to supporting and celebrating our local Indigenous communities while working to break down institutional barriers to make our libraries equitable and accessible. Now, before we dive in, uh, I'm actually going to show you what our audio technology kit has in it. And so I'm going to turn on my camera here. There we go. Okay, so this is our audio technology kit. And when it comes to you, if you request it, it'll come to you in this bin. When you open the kit, the first thing you're gonna find is this resource folder. And in the resource folder, we have our uh, lending policy at the very front. We also have information on all the contents of the kit and it has instructions on how to use each of the different pieces of tech. And then we also do a deep dive on Audacity, which is the audio software we're going to be using in our session today. So if you are brand new to audio software, feel comfortable reading this, and you should be uh, good to go. So that is in there for you. We have a Blue Yeti USB microphone. Comes in a box like this. I'll show you what it looks like. So it stands just like this, and we've attached a pop filter on the top that you can put on. And it's really easy, it just plugs directly into the USB port on your computer. So you would put the plug in the bottom, put the other one in the computer, and it connects. Now when you record, what you'll often do, you don't have to, but oftentimes you can plug headphones in so that you can listen to the feedback that you're recording into the mic. Now, if you're recording with multiple people, uh, that can be an issue because there's only one plug. So we've included a headphone splitter, and this goes into the headphone plug, and then that way you can put two pairs of headphones in so that two people can listen at the same time. Now, speaking of headphones, we do have two pairs of studio quality headphones in the kit. They are in a box just like this. And they're quite comfortable. They're padded and they can be adjusted to any head size. Next in the kit is this guy. So this is a sound isolation box and it folds up like this. And this is where that foam comes in. So we've included a bunch of foam in the kit. And basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna line the entirety of the box with the foam. And once there is foam on all four sides in the back, you can put your microphone inside 
And then that way, when you're speaking into the box, it's going to eliminate any kind of unwanted sound. So that would be things like um, the hum of the room. Um, it might also help to make it sound a little quieter if you're in a noisy place like the public library. So this is gonna help with that. All right, and the last thing in the kit is this glue bag. And inside the bag, we have our handy recorder. So this is what is referred to as a field mic sometimes, which basically just means it's a portable microphone. So we've included a micro SD card, which you need to put into the mic so that the audio files have something to save to. And we also have batteries and this rechargeable battery port so that you'll always be good to go for uh, recording sounds that aren't directly at your workstation. Now to get those files onto your computer, we've included another USB cord. So once you're done going around the library, maybe you're interviewing people, maybe you're recording the sound of the fan because you wanna get that sound effect into your project. But once you're done doing that, to get the audio files onto your computer, you're gonna plug the microphone with the USB cord, and then you can transfer the files directly uh, into your audio software. So that is our audio technology kit, and I encourage everyone to place a request on it. But let's get back to our slides. All right, so let's go over what we're gonna cover in the session today. It's split up into four groups. We're gonna start with content creation, then go into recording. We'll take a look at the editing process, and then we'll go into the promotion and distribution of your podcast. What we're not going to cover today is where to purchase equipment, how to script your podcast, vocal techniques, so that would be things like speaking evenly and confidently. And finally, we will not be going over monetization, and that means making money off of your podcast. And it is possible to do that, but we won't be doing that today. All right, we're going to start with content creation. What is a podcast? So a podcast is a digital audio or a video recording that is available on the internet to download to either your computer or to a mobile device, most commonly your phone, mobile devices. The term podcast is a combination of iPod and broadcast, um, which is interesting because Podcasts are not specific to Apple products, but the name stuck and it is now a podcast. Many podcasts are produced by individuals that have little or no broadcasting experience. And unlike conventional broadcasting, podcasting is very inexpensive because it only requires an internet connection and really simple computer programs. So it's a very accessible uh, medium. Podcasting is also more open to non-professional broadcasters. So it's not governed by rules or laws um, like public radio or public television is. And those are established by the CRTC, which is the Canadian Radio, Television and Telecommunications Commission. So therefore, there is inherently more freedom of content when you are podcasting. So for example, swearing is something that you can do on a public podcast. You cannot swear on public radio or public television. A little bit of history about podcasting. Uh, podcasting started in 2001 when several bloggers began experimenting with audio blogging. And these bloggers had an interest in finding a way to listen to the blog while not at their computer. So they created a way to download an audio file to an MP3 player or an iPod at the time. And then in 2004, the entire process became formalized when Apple Podcasts launched. And that's among other computer programs that also help to automate the process. Now, podcast styles vary and are more than just for entertainment. I've seen universities use podcasting for lectures. So a professor will record class lectures and then they make them available to download so that students who miss the class can still have the lecture content. I've also seen podcasting used as a form of audiobook. And although this is not always legal, um, I've seen 
books be uploaded chapter by chapter by someone reading out the chapter in podcast form. So then you can essentially listen to the book um, as podcast episodes, one for each chapter. Now, before we hit record, we want to consider why we are making a podcast. Okay, so this is important to think about as uh, this intent, your intention might change your creative approach. So podcasting can be used for a number of things. It could be for reaching an audience, and that can be either a very broad audience or maybe it's a very specific audience. It could be used for artistic expression, or maybe it's just for personal enjoyment, right? Maybe it's something for yourself or for close friends and family. So let's take a look at the different types of podcasts that we can make. The first one is the interview. Okay. And the interview podcast refers to one person or more interviewing another person or more. So the audience or the listener, as I'll refer to them, only cares about the opinion of one. They're tuning in to listen to the person who is being interviewed. And so examples of this would be uh, WTF with Mark Marin and the TED interview. Um, and I will say that all these podcasts that I'm showing as examples, most of these are available on Apple and Spotify podcasts. So if there's one that piques your interest, that's where you can find them. The next type is conversational, and this would be a group of two or more people who are all equally contributing their opinion. So the listener is tuning in because they want to hear what everyone has to say on a subject. Uh, so examples of this would be the Joe Rogan uh, experience or Freakonomics Radio. The monologue podcast is when one person is either narrating something they've made or they're discussing something on their own. So there's no guest, it's just them by themselves. Um, so the listener is tuning in because they care about either that one person's opinion or they care about the topic that is being discussed. And so a couple examples of this are Dan Carlin's Hardcore History and Skeptoid with Brian Dunning. The investigative or narrative podcast, um, and this is probably the most popular because it's the true crime podcast craze that everyone is into, um, but this refers to podcasters finding new information on a topic, most commonly true crime, and they create a narrative. And so they might also include um, other components like interviews that aren't being directly recorded in front of them, or they might have uh, interview clips that they're splicing into the audio. Um, and in this case, the listener cares about the topic. They're tuning in because they want to know what happened. So examples of this are the very popular serial uh, podcast or the CBC one missing and murdered finding Cleo. And the last type that we'll speak about is the theatrical or the audio drama. So this is very akin to radio dramas and it creates that theater of the mind. So these are fictional stories and they use lots of sound effects and multiple voice actors to create um, a fictional narrative. Um, I've even seen some podcasts cast famous actors, which can be great for them because a lot of times actors will be cast in more prominent or leading roles in a podcast than they would get in film or television. And so examples of this would be Welcome to Night Vale or the Magnus Archives. So those are just a couple examples. Now, if I was starting a, a podcast from scratch, there are two questions that I would ask myself. I would think, what is the topic and what is the format or the type that we are just referring to? Because we have to think a cooking podcast that is in an interview format is going to be completely different from a cooking podcast that is in a monologue format. It's not as easy as just choosing a topic and hitting record. Um, you have to put a little bit of thought behind what you're going to do. But once you've decided, I would refer to other podcasts at a similar format and listen to them figure out what the structure is and use that to help build my own. All right, we're gonna get into the recording portion. Now, before we record, 
we need to choose the right equipment. And the first piece of equipment we need is the microphone. And there are three types of mics we can use. We can use our computer mic, which is built in. We can use the USB mic, which is uh, plugged into the computer. And I showed you that one earlier in our audio kit. Or we can use an external mic. So something like the handheld recorder or our phone, right? A lot of people will record stuff on their phone and then just email the files to themselves uh, to work on later. Now, when we use a mic, uh, the mics pick up sound in different ways and different mics will pick up different types of sound. So there are three main uh, mic types, I guess you should be aware of, unidirectional, bidirectional, and omnidirectional. So when we speak into the mic, if we're gonna imagine the gray circle as our microphone, this blue outline represents where the sound is being picked up from. So in a unidirectional mic, if I'm speaking from this end, I'm up here, I'm gonna to want to speak directly into the mic from that side because it's only picking up sound from the top end, okay? So unidirectional mics are typically used for one person. And what this means is it's gonna block out all the unwanted sound um, coming from the back, right? So it's aimed at you. It's only gonna be picking up your voice. It'll eliminate all the other extra sound we don't need. A bi-directional mic is gonna capture sound from both sides of the mic, okay? From the front and the back. So this is ideal for interviews. We can have one person on this side of the mic. We can have one person on that side of the mic, right? And it's gonna pick up sound from each speaker evenly into the microphone. Omnidirectional mic means that the it's capturing sound evenly all across, okay? So this would be ideal if you're doing maybe a large group conversation and you wanna record everyone, or if you wanna record uh, sound effects or field noise. And field noise is just uh, like outdoor, outside, noise that you're recording to add depth to your audio, but this is gonna create a nice even capture of sound. Now, in most cases, each person involved in your podcast is gonna have their own microphone, and these are typically going to be unidirectional. Um, however, that also requires a soundboard and can get much more um, complex in terms of setup. So what we've done is included the Blue Yeti mic, because the Blue Yeti mic has the settings to change the sound capturing directions. So you can set it as unidirectional, you can set it as bidirectional, and you can set it as omnidirectional, okay? Three for the price of one. A pop filter, as I showed you earlier in the kit, is used to help smooth out uh, fast moving air going into the microphone. It's gonna help prevent unwanted peaks of noise because when we speak into the microphone, if we get too close or we speak too fast, we're gonna get popping noises. And those are really hard to edit out in the editing phase. So we wanna prevent that as much as possible. And that's why we use a pop filter. Now, these are two examples. We have a foam one that goes directly over top of the mic. And then we have this one that attaches to a mic stand and you would speak uh, through it into the mic that way. Now you don't need to buy professional grade ones. You can create your own as well. I've seen people create pop filters out of a mason jar lid and they put pantyhose over top of it. So it creates a nice barrier. I've also seen people use socks. So you could put a sock over top of your microphone and it will create a similar effect. Now, if you are making your own homemade pop filters, I would always double check that it's not muffling the noise. So record a little bit, listen back. Does it sound muffled or does it sound nice and even? Always double check before you record your entire project and then you realize, oh no, the entire thing sounds muffled because then that's not good. All right. When we record sound, the noise into the microphone is picked up into what is called channels, and those are two different channels, the left channel and the right channel. And this can most easily be explained as the noises that you hear in your left ear and your right ear, okay? 
Um, so when you're wearing headphones, for example, when you're listening to a piece of music, if you take out your left earphone and you're only hearing part of the song in your right earphone, that's what I mean by channels. Okay. And this is where we get the two different modes of recording. If we record in mono mode, when we speak into the mic, the sound is going to be captured evenly in both the left and right channels. So it doesn't matter if we have only the left earphone in or only the right earphone in, we're gonna hear the entirety of the sound because it was recorded evenly in both. If we record in stereo mode, this is where we get differences in sound um, in our left and right channels. Together, they create one cohesive sound. But if we take out our left earphone or our right earphone, we might hear differences in the audio. Okay, And this can be because of the way it was recorded. So if I'm positioned at my mic more so to the left, and I'm speaking into it that way, and I'm recording in stereo mode, my right ear or the uh, right channel or sorry, my left ear, uh, left channel is going to pick up more sound than the right channel. Okay, so when we record, we do have to decide whether we want the sound to be captured evenly in both channels or if we want variance. Um, so sometimes in music or sound effects, uh, the stereo option is optimal. And this is because you can create really interesting effects like music that starts in uh, one ear in one channel and goes over to the next. Or if you create maybe an explosion sound effect and you want it to start in the left ear and end in the right, that sort of a thing. All right. Now, before we record, we need something to record into. We don't just plug in our microphone into the computer and hit record. We need audio software to record into. So audio software, or a DAW, which is a, a digital audio workstation, and this is this is the correct term that you'll hear most people use. But these uh, the DAW is used for recording and editing. Okay, We record into the DAW, and we edit in the DAW as well. Now there are free options and paid options. We are gonna be using Audacity in our session today and Audacity is free. So that's ideal for us. GarageBand is also free. Uh, so if you are a Mac computer user, you can use GarageBand. It's not just for music, you can create podcasts in it and other audio projects. Now, if you wanna get a little bit fancier, you can do a paid version. So this would be things like Logic Pro, Adobe Audition, and Ableton Live, all of which are used professionally in music and radio. Um, and you might be thinking, are there huge differences between a paid version and a free version? And the answer is yes and no. Uh, the paid version might have some extra features or be a little more user-friendly, like have a more user-friendly display. But for beginners, they essentially both do the same thing. Record, edit, export audio. So let's talk a little bit about the one we're gonna be using today, which is Audacity. So this is the site that you can download Audacity from. It's audacityteam.org and it's free and it works for Mac, it works for PC. Um, so it's very accessible across the board. But let's take a look at what Audacity looks like. So this is the website. If you go to audacityteam.org, and all you have to do is go to this download tab and select the computer you're using. And once you click on it, it should automatically start downloading to your computer. Okay. But let's open up a blank project and we'll take a look at what the software looks like. All right, so this is our display. When you open Audacity, it's split into three core components the top bar, the middle, and the lower bar. The top bar has our controls, play audio, stop audio, record audio. It's where we set up our microphone and headphones if we are using them, okay? So a lot of our settings are done on the top bar. The middle bar is where we record our actual audio. It's where the recordings will live. It's where we put tracks, we record audio onto tracks, and I will show you uh, that momentarily. 
the bottom bar shows our time. Okay, so it shows how long our project is and it counts by hours, minutes, and seconds. Okay. So before we begin, we need to check if our microphone is connected. Now, chances are, if you are just using your built-in desktop mic, you should be good to go. But if we are using the USB mic, we need to make sure that it is connected into Audacity. So we're gonna go to audio setup at the top here. We're gonna go down to recording device. And I don't have it plugged in right now, but if I did, uh, the blue Yeti USB would be here. I would select it and then it is now connected. But what we should do is we should check that our microphone is picking up sound. So I'm using the built-in uh, computer mic right now, but how can I tell that it's actually picking up my voice? We're gonna go to this little microphone icon beside this bar here. I'm gonna click on it and I'm gonna click start monitoring. And you can see as I talk, it's showing the decibel level, the recording level of my voice. Okay, sound is measured in decibels and we'll get more into that later. But we can tell that it is recording based on the way it is moving uh, from my speech pattern. Okay, so we are good to go for recording. We know our mic's connected and we know we are picking up sound. But now we need a, a space to record. We need a track. Okay, we record on tracks. So to add a track, we go up here to our top bar, tracks, and we go to add new. And this is where it's giving us the mono or stereo option, okay? If I click stereo, you'll notice there are two spaces, one for each channel, the left channel and the right channel. To delete a track, I'm just gonna hit the X, uh, X button in the top here. Let's add a mono track and see what that looks like. Okay, only one channel because it records sound evenly in both the left and the right channel. Now, when you are starting a project, um, you need to pick whether you were recording the entire thing in mono or you were recording the entire thing in stereo. You cannot mix the two. You need to make a decision and commit. So we're going to do stereo. I'm going to go to tracks, add new, stereo. All right, and we have our track. So let's uh, record a little bit. I'm going to make sure that my uh, marker here is all the way at the beginning of my track. So I'm gonna hit my back button here. And then when I'm ready to record, I'm going to hit the red record button. So I'm gonna press it. Hello, my name is Duncan, and this is a test for the Intro to Podcasting program. When I'm done recording, I hit the stop button and it stops recording my voice. Now we can see that we have waveforms on the left track, on the top here and on the right track on the bottom here. And although they look exactly the same, there's actually very small differences in uh, the two channels. Okay, so let's click back again, make sure our marker is at the start of our track and let's click play to see how it sounds. Hello, my name is Duncan and this is a test for the intro to podcasting program. All right. So that is our audio, it worked well. Now, as we go through um, the different steps, you might be thinking, how many tracks do I need for my project? Now, for beginners, a good rule of thumb is to have one track for music, one track for sound effects, and one track for your speaker, okay? Because we can add more tracks as we go. If I wanna add more stereo tracks, I'll add two more. And what's nice is we can reduce these tracks so that we can have a nicer display and see everything we're working on. So I'm just gonna click to the bottom of my first one and minimize it a little bit. I'm gonna minimize my second one a little bit and I'll minimize my, oh, third one a little bit, there we go, okay? So that's how we record audio. Now, what if we've recorded audio on our phone or with the handy recorder? Okay, how do we get that file into Audacity? 
Now there's two ways we can do this. We can drag and drop. So if I'm gonna open up a audio file here. So I have an audio file from a folder and I can drag it in and I would just drop it into the space and the audio is there. I can also go to file, import, audio, and then I can select the piece of audio that I want to use. And now it's imported. But wait a second, now we have two pieces of audio that are over top of each other. So if I hit play, Hello, my name is Duncan, and this is a test for the intro to the podcasting program. Maybe I don't want them to play at the same time, or I want to listen to each one individually so I can make edits on it. This is where we use the solo and the mute features for our tracks. So when we have multiple tracks and we want to record more, um, we want to mute all the other tracks so that we are not recording on top of the tracks. Because if I open up a new track here, new stereo track, and I start recording on this one, the microphone's not only going to pick up the sound of my voice, it's going to pick up the sound of the top track, and it's going to pick up the sound of this music track we just added. And then it's going to create a really distorted sound, and it's not going to it's not going to sound nice. So what we can do is we can solo or mute our tracks. So for example, on the top one, if I go to mute, it's going to gray out the track. And then when I play, it's not going to play my voice at the same time. If I hit solo, it's going to mute all of the other tracks and only play the track that I have selected. Hello, my name is Duncan, and this is a test for the intro to podcasting program. Okay, so this tool is also really helpful in the editing stage when you are focusing on specific parts of your project and you only want to hear one particular track at a time. Okay. Let's talk a little bit about the different types of audio files. So when we listen to music on the computer or iPhone or transferring audio files around, we often are listening to what is called an MP3 file, okay? In Audacity, we record uh, audio as WAV files, okay? So MP3 files and WAV files are similar but different, okay? You can import MP3 files into Audacity and it will live here and it will convert fine and you can do the same with your WAV files as well. If we were to import an MP3 file into Audacity, you would notice that the waveform is much smaller. It would almost look like a line because an MP3 file is a much more compressed version of a WAV file. These are WAV files. These are very big files. And the preference is to use WAV files in audio software because they're so large, it makes them easier to go in and edit them, right? So if you start looking for files and you see them downloading as MP3 and you see some downloading as WAV, don't get scared. You can use both in Audacity, okay? You can convert them both ways. And when we export our project, we can export the entire thing as MP3 or we can export the entire th thing as WAV. Now let's say we want to save our project and work on it later. So we're not ready to export it as an audio file. We're not ready to export it as an MP3 or a WAV file. We just wanna save it and then come back and work on it later. What we're gonna do is we're gonna hit file, save project, save project as, and it's gonna save it as an AUP3 file. So I'm gonna put intro to podcasting, um, save for later, okay? All right, so it's saved to my files as an AUP3 file. Now I can exit out of this and I can open this file at another time. If I try to open this file on a computer that does not have Audacity downloaded onto it, it will not open. You need to ensure that you have Audacity downloaded onto your computer before you open up that project. So if you email it to another computer and you wonder why it's not opening, 
you will have to download Audacity to that computer first. Okay. Let's review what we've gone over. We took a look at the display. We took a look at the audio setup and how to make sure our mic is connected. We took a look at adding and deleting tracks. We took a look at pressing record and listening back to our audio. We saw how to import audio files, whether we drag them or we do it through uh, importing in the file tab. We learned about solo and muting tracks and how to save our work as a project. We also talked about MP3 and WAV files and how MP3 files are compressed and WAV files are uncompressed and how that file type depends on your recording method, but they can convert both ways. So you can use both of them. And this is just an image of MP3 uh, showing that they're very compressed and WAV showing that they are uncompressed and you can get in there and do some much deeper editing. All right, we are going to talk about editing next. So when we do editing, oftentimes we want some sound effects. Now, sound effects similar to books and movies can be copyrighted, right? So we need to find sound effects that are royalty free. And this means that they may be used without the need to pay any royalties or any licensing fees uh, for each use because we do not want to be sued. Sound effects are used for transitions. Maybe you want some background noise or some emphasis in different parts of your project. And I have a couple of uh, sites that you can find free sound effects on, okay? So I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't go to YouTube and just start downloading noise from there. Go to these established sites that have royalty free sound effects that you can use legally or record your own, right? Use the handy microphone, record your own sound effects and import them into your audio project. All right. So I'm gonna open up my example again. And this is another example project just with a extra track. Now, when we are editing, Sometimes we want to move our tracks around. So we can do this by selecting pieces of audio and we can move it up and down the track. We can even move it to another track if we please. Okay. You can also copy and paste. So if I copy that one, I can hit paste and paste it as many times as I want. Um, what if we want to split our tracks, right? What if we want to take this long piece of audio and turn it into two, or we want to edit out a portion of the track we don't like? Well, we can zoom in using the zoom in tool at the top here. And this will zoom us in further and further into the waveform. Okay, so depending on where you want your cut to be, where you want to split the track, now there are a couple ways we can split. We can split the clip here, maybe split the clip there, select the middle part, delete, and then we have two separate tracks. I'm gonna hit undo. So if you ever make a mistake, uh, you can go to edit, undo, and it will revert back to the previous uh, motion you made. So that's one way to split the clip. Another way is to highlight the part you want to get rid of and then just hit delete. But what this does is it merges the two tracks together so that you don't have two separate pieces of audio. It converts them into one automatically. Okay. So this can be really useful for noises that we don't want. So like unwanted lip smacking noises, which is referred to as cat mouth and cat mouth is a radio term and that's that like that kind of uh lip noise that is made into the mic sometimes and we don't want to hear that um again this is why it is important to record in a nice even tone um, so that we can prevent that as much as possible 
Now, when we have multiple tracks and we are putting our project together, sometimes the volume can be off. The background music might be louder than the primary speaker, um, and then we can't hear them, which isn't good. So we can adjust our track volume to fix this. And I'll get into exactly how loud everything should be in decibel levels in a little bit, but let's just practice fixing uh, some volume issues. Now I'm gonna zoom back out a little bit. So this top track is my speaking track. This middle track is my sound effects and this bottom one is my music, but maybe my music is too loud. I'm gonna go to the dial, the plus and minus dial on the side here, and this adjusts the decibel level or the volume of our track. And I'm gonna lower it a little bit. And that's going to decrease the volume of this track. On my speaker track, maybe I want to increase the volume a little bit. So I'm gonna go to my volume dial and increase the track a little bit. Okay, and so this is how we blend the different pieces of audio together uh, or mix them together as, as it's called to create a nice cohesive sound. Okay, now there's another dial on the tracks that say left and right, and this is our channel tracks, our left and right channel. So if we want our sound effects, our sound effects in the middle here to only be heard on the left side on the left channel, we would pan the dial over to the L. And then when we listen back, those sound effects are going to be heard in the left ear only, right? Or maybe we only want it partially in the left ear. So you'll hear most of it in the left ear and just a little bit in the right ear. So that's a fun tool to play with, um, plugging in headphones into the computer and adjusting it like that. All right, let's talk about sound effects. Uh, not sound effects, effects that we can put on our sound, which is a little different. Um, so we're going to use this bottom one here. And I'm going to solo it so that we are only listening to uh, the audio on this track. But right now we have some basic boring audio. If I play it right now, not much going on. Audacity has different effects that we can add to our audio to spice things up. Okay, and these effects live under the effect tab and they're sorted into these different categories, volume and compression, fading, pitch and tempo. A lot of these are used for music actually. Um, so, and a lot of these are also really standard across most uh, digital audio workstations or audio software. So you're gonna find these whether you use Audacity, whether you use GarageBand, or whether you use paid versions, they're pretty pretty standard across most. But let's take a look at a couple different ones that we can play with. Um, so the echo one, if I wanna put an echo effect on my audio, I'm gonna highlight the part that I want to echo. I'm gonna go up to effect and find the echo effect. There we go, echo. And then it's gonna give me some parameters that I can adjust. So this one has delay time and decay factor. So I'm just gonna leave it as is and see what happens. Whoa, and you'll see when I hit apply, it's added that effect to my audio. Now the settings that we put have created it to distort the audio. And we can tell that because there's no waveform anymore. It's just a block of noise. So let's play this back and see what it sounds like. Okay, so it's getting getting pretty loud there. So that's the echo effect. Another effect we could do is the fade in or fade out. So maybe we want we want the music to gradually increase in volume or gradually decrease in volume. So I've highlighted the start. I'm gonna go up to effect, uh, fade in, and we can see now that the waveform the very beginning of it has gotten very tiny, but it gradually increases into its normal size. So when I play it back, okay, it fades in.
Another one we can use is the crossfade clips uh, effect. And I'm going to actually use this middle track to show that example. So I have two pieces of audio and we're gonna play um, the middle space in between them. Okay, so maybe I don't like that they are separate and I want to actually combine them together. I want them to crossfade into each other to create a more cohesive sound. So I'm gonna align them right next to each other. I'm going to highlight how much I want to crossfade. I'm gonna to go to effect, fading, crossfade clips. There we go. And now it has created one piece of audio and it should crossfade into each other. Let's listen. Oh, let's listen one more time. Okay, so that's a fun effect to play around with as well. Okay. Let's talk about uh, volume levels next. We're going to talk about decibel levels. But I, before we get into that, I do encourage you to take a look at all these other effects. They all do different things. Um, and if you need help with the effects, you can actually go to Help, Manual, and this will open up uh, a wiki that goes through the entirety of Audacity and you can go to effects. It'll give you every single effect, like the echo one, I can click in and it'll give me exactly what it looks like, exactly what the parameters are and how to adjust them and, and what they mean too, which can be really helpful. Anyway, let's talk about uh, volume levels. So sound volume is measured as uh, decibel levels or DB for short. And we can see uh, that when we hit play, the volume in the decibel bar in this piece is gonna be really high. So if I start playing this, we're looking in the top corner here. Okay, so this is what's measuring our volume level. Now this uh, meter is starting at zero and it goes all the way down to negative 54, okay? So ideally, we want our track to live somewhere in between zero to negative 18 decibel levels. So kind of in this top uh, third of the bar. Okay. We can adjust the volume levels of our tracks to make a cohesive sound. So when we were talking about increasing the speaker volume as opposed to decreasing the music volume, the speaking volume your primary speaker should live somewhere in between zero to negative six. So right in the very, very top space here. Whereas things like your background music or sound effects should be lower than that. It should be living in between uh, maybe negative 15 to negative 18, so about here. So let's look at these different volume levels. Okay, so that one's hitting about uh, a height of negative 15. It's going a little low at times, but that seems like a good place to be. This speaking volume, let's see what this one does. Best. My name is Duncan, and I'm your host. So that one's pretty hot, right? It's hitting red. It's getting very, very high up there. So to adjust that, we're going to go over to our volume dial and lower it a little bit. See if that fixes anything. My name is Duncan, and I'm your host for this episode. Okay, so there we go. Now it's sitting in that zero to negative six range. Okay, so that's how you adjust it so that when you combine the audio together, it creates a nice even blend. All right. So I'm gonna get out of this and we'll go back to our slides. We'll do a little review here. All right, so we looked at selecting and moving our tracks. We looked at splitting our tracks and zooming in. We took a look at how to adjust the track volume and the left and right channels. We took a look at different effects. And I forgot to mention effects are also called plugins. Um, so we looked at the echo effect, the fading in, fading out, and cross fading clips. And I showed you where you can find the Audacity manual to learn more about effects, but also more about Audacity in general.
And then we talked about decibel levels, how to measure how loud the audio is, and that it should be no more than about negative one or zero, and no less than negative 18 decibels. Okay. Uh, we spoke a little bit about mixing. So mixing refers to arranging audio so that it has a natural cohesive sound to the listener. So mixing involves uh, adjusting the sound levels, the volume levels, which we've done, and removing unwanted sounds. So that is like splitting uh, the clips and deleting parts of audio we do not want in there. Okay. Uh, exporting. I will show you how to export in a moment here, but exporting refers to selecting the audio that we want to take out of Audacity and turn into an MP3 file so that we can listen to it at a later point. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to listen to uh, an example that I've made. Uh, if I can just open it here. And we're going to listen to all the different uh, sound volumes and the different uh, noises that are in this example. And you'll notice that the audio takes are going to sound different. Some might, my voice sounds a little higher, some a little lower. You might hear my clothing in some takes. And this is intentional, so you can hear the difference in uh, in, in why it is important to record everything all at the same time so that it does not sound different when you are editing and, and creating your project. Okay, and then I'll show you how to export it. But let's take a listen to this example project so you can get an idea of what what a nice mix sounds like. Uh, so this is just a, a fake uh, book club podcast, um, just to give some context. All right, let's hit play. Welcome, listener. Strathcona County Library Podcast. My name is Duncan, and I am your host for this episode. Today, we will be discussing hot new titles that are in our bestseller express. For our first review, we are going to discuss All the Devils Are Here by Louise Penny. On their first night in Paris, the Gamaches gather as a family for a bistro dinner with our man's godfather, the billionaire Stephen Horowitz. Walking home together after the meal, they watch in horror as Stephen is knocked down and critically injured in what Gamache knows is no accident, but a deliberate attempt on the elderly man's life. When a strange key is found in Stephen's possession, it sends Armand, his wife Reine Marie, and his former second-in-command at the Sûreté, Jean-Guy Beauvoir, from the top of the Tour de Eiffel to the bowels of the Paris archives, from luxury hotels to odd coded works of art. A gruesome discovery in Stephen's Paris apartment makes it clear the secrets are far more rancid and the danger far greater and more imminent than they realized. Soon, the whole family is caught up in a web of lies and deceit. In order to find the truth, Gamache will have to decide whether he can trust his friends, his colleagues, his instincts, his own past, and his own family. For even the City of Light casts long shadows, and in that darkness, devils hide. Stick around for a lively discussion on All the Devils Are Here. All right. So you can see that there's sound effects used, there's background noise used. It stayed at its current decibel level um, around zero to negative six and creates a nice, easy, even, cohesive sound. You can also hear um, different takes. Um, and that sometimes the, the hum of the room sounds differently in some takes uh, as opposed to others. But that is an example of something you can create. All right, back to our slides. Oh, I was going to show you how to export. Never mind. All right, to export, we have our audio project. This is all good. We are ready to convert it to an MP3. Very easy, we just go to File, Export, 
export as MP3. And then we save a space on our computer where we want that MP3 to be exported. Okay, very easy. All right, so we've completed our podcast or our audio project, and now we want to do some promotion and distribution because we want it to be heard. We want it to live someplace. So let's uh, create some identifying information. We need a name, right? Uh, the Loop is a CBC Edmonton podcast that I'm going to be using as an example, okay? The name is The Loop, refers to the Anthony Henday, easily identifiable as an Edmonton-based podcast. We need a description, and we also need a podcast image or a brand image because different sites or platforms are going to ask you to upload one, so you need something that represents what your uh, podcast is about, okay? You can tell this is about Edmonton. This is the Anthony Henday that wraps around Edmonton. Again, easily identifiable. In terms of promoting, we can use social media to promote, right? We can use maybe our own website. We want to create a website to uh, host our, our files or, or uh, divert uh, listeners to a podcast host site, which I will get to in a moment. Um, but we also want to think about who is our audience when we are pr uh, promoting. So this can kind of Thinking about this can help determine what kind of marketing or branding you want to do. Is this a podcast for children? Is this for adults? Is this a podcast for scientists? I don't know, right? So things to think about when you are starting the promotion of your project. Now, we can't just upload files to Facebook, Twitter, um, Apple Music, and Spotify. We can't just upload MP3 files we need to have them on a podcast host site. So a host site is a place where we house the content um, and where it, everything is going to live essentially. And what's nice about these host sites is that they have tracking features. So you can track things like how many people are listening. It e might even have um, location information, like how many listeners you have in Canada as compared to the UK. But what we're looking for in these host sites is an RSS feed. And an RSS feed stands for really simple syndication. Um, and it's essentially a link that has a set of instructions built into the link. So when we're uploading uh, our podcast to Apple or Spotify, it's going to ask us for this RSS feed, which will be given to us once we've uploaded episodes to our host site. But what this means is every time you upload an episode to your host site, it's automatically going to update to every single place that you've put your RSS feed. So you can have your podcast on Spotify, Apple, and 10 other um, podcast apps, but you only need to upload it to one place, your host site, right? So this makes it really easy to upload content and then have it instantly heard uh, in multiple spaces. Now, there are a couple free options for host site. Uh, Buzzsprout and Podomatic both have uh, free trial versions that you can use. Um, if you are intending on uploading a ton of content, you will have to pay uh, for a, a subscription to a host site. So just something to, to keep in mind. All right, when we are uploading to Apple Podcasts, I'm gonna go over Apple and Spotify and how we get our content onto those uh, apps. We need an Apple ID. And what we're gonna go to is we're gonna go to podcastconnect.apple.com. I'm gonna ask for uh, our RSS feed. It's going to ask us to choose a category for our podcast, whether that's art, business, comedy, whatever it may be. And it wants us to have at least one episode uploaded to our podcast host site. So you need to make sure that you have actual content on your host site before you start submitting it to, to these apps. Um, and then it'll also ask for a name, description, cover art, brand image, uh, etc. When you submit to Apple, it takes them about five to eight days to review and then have it officially on the app. Okay, so that's the that's the waiting period you're working with. Spotify works a little bit differently. Instead of an Apple ID, you need to create a Spotify account uh, and you would go to podcasters.spotify.com and this will help you get started. Spotify is gonna ask for your RSS feed link. It's gonna ask for your uh, name, description, brand image. Um, but what's unique about Spotify is that 
you cannot have audio that is longer than 83 minutes in length. So they restrict how long your podcast can be. Now, what happens if I have a four hour long podcast? Uh, to get around this, you're gonna split your four hour long podcast into parts that are less than 83 minutes. So then you can have um, my happy podcast part one, my happy podcast part two, my happy podcast part three. And then the entirety of your podcast is uploaded onto Spotify, but it's just split into three separate episodes. Okay, so that's how you work around that restriction. What's nice about Spotify is when you do submit, it only takes them a few hours to approve. So it's it's pretty instant uh, to get your, your content onto Spotify. Um, now other audio platforms will have a very similar process to Apple and Spotify, but not all of them are the same. Uh, many podcasters will also distribute their content across multiple podcast apps and platforms uh, to reach as large of an audience as possible. Because at the end of the day, the more places your content exists, the higher chance that it's going to be heard. All right, so for a brief review, we talked about content creation. We talked about the recording process, the editing stage, and then a little bit about promo and distribution of your podcast. And before we end, I'll just bring attention to some of our other resources that you can use in your uh, either podcast or your audio project journeys. If you go to trackpack.av.ca, type in podcast or podcasting, we have lots of items on uh, how to create podcasts and how to get started. There's also our e-resource LinkedIn Learning, which has free courses on producing podcasts, free courses on learning audacity, and also how to speak confidently and effectively. Okay. If you have any questions or you'd like to learn more, you can contact me at dlatoski at peacelibrarysystem.ab.ca. And that is all I have for you today. All right. Thanks, everyone.